Anticipation filled the air as I packed my bags in preparation of my third trip to Eastern Europe and the country of Bulgaria. I loaded up the car and took the quick journey over to Salisbury, Maryland, got my tickets correct, and waited for the jump flight over to Charlotte, North Carolina to then link up with my international airlines, Lufthansa. In my opinion, Salisbury and U.S. Air is always the best with superb service, quick entry, a feeling of safety, and the possibility of seeing friends and learning of their journeys while chatting about your own. As luck had it, I got to chill with a close buddy, and time flew, and before I knew it, so was I, flying. smaller plane flew smoothly south and before I knew it I was in Charlotte International and on the way to Munich Germany via Lufthansa. The flight was incredible with exceptional service. Ten hours went by super quick with some rest, a couple of movies and a little bit of food and drink. Before I had settled I took off on another flight to my final destination of Sofia, Bulgaria where the real adventure was soon to begin. I landed in Sofia with family waiting for me. I quickly grabbed my bags and we jumped in the Volkswagen Polo and off to Bellini for another four hour journey. The ride is another great start to an already awesome adventure. Cars are flying by at excessive speeds as we cruise on both large highways and small roads that roll into small towns as well. As we leave the city and pass the four tunnels, I know we are on the way to Pleven and then off to Bellini. Four hours later, a few different roads and some cool scenes, we arrive in Bellany, a quaint town on the Danube River in northern Bulgaria. Exhausted but tripping from such a long journey, I sat around with family, ate some food, reunited with the Boguski language. My wife and I started to map out the next part of our journey that would start in the morning for the Black Sea, another 400 kilometers about the same distance we just went through. Before I knew it, I had arose from sleep and were preparing to cruise the country of Bulgaria with the first destination, the sea capital of Varna. As I've been to a lot of places in Bulgaria, the Black Sea I have not seen yet, so the level of excitement was incredible. The roads were incredibly filled with small towns and villages, each with something unique, and a lot of times very cool churches and statues. This ride was extremely memorable with an old Roman fortress that was remarkable. As we arrived at the sea city of Varna, I was astonished. Kind of like New York City on the sea. It is a very large place with everything a city has to offer and a beautiful beach as well. We strolled the center and checked out a few of its interesting features, but both realized that the day was very young and we still had some travel energy in us. We decided to cruise from Varna and head south to wherever we would end up. With many beach towns and a car that gets incredible gas mileage, we didn't know where we would stop. We set our sights on Abzur, about halfway between Varna and Borgas. Traveling through windy roads and glimpses of the sea as we see more beautiful scenery and more modern towns. Just like most beach areas, the sea towns are colorful and build up and continuously grow. Our travel is in early October, but it is being early fall and their summer season is over. We were up against time and the end of the season. We passed Abzur and kept on going, deciding that Slunchev Briag, or better known as Sunny Beach, would be our final destination from such a long traveling day. As we cruised into town, it immediately reminded me of Ocean City, home, full of rides, amusements, and water parks, large hotels, and a cool center. We quickly got a spot for the night and took a stroll to the center. 
It was already night, and the city was barely open. The season was over, and it was the last night before businesses would close for it. We actually enjoyed the lights and tranquility of a place that is usually super packed. We had a nice dinner and checked out a few things in this cool town and spoke of our thoughts for the next day's journey. After dinner, we decided to get some rest and that we would head south in the morning to the city of Borgas for a look and then we would cruise to the middle of the country to Veliko Tarnova. We started the drive and didn't get too far, like 20 kilometers or less, when we stopped at Nesaber. Nesaber is a very old city on the sea and by far my favorite. A small bridge took us into this old fortress-like town that thrives on fishing and the sea. You can look back and see sunny beach and beautiful villas on the hillside and in front lots of boats and beautiful stone entrances into the coolest town ever on the sea. The streets, shops, restaurants, churches all look the same, built with a very old stone structure that was amazing. Restaurants overlook the sea and we cruised this small island on every nook and cranny, actually circled it and even finding a very old church as well. This place was both mystical and amazing. It has awesome hotels, shops, restaurants and people. Our luck was also fabulous. It was Saturday and the last day of their season. We got to see a great place, meet some nice people, and do some shopping. We almost even stayed the night, but we loaded up and continued south to Borgas, which reminded me of the capital of Sofia. We did a quick cruise through Borgas and then took over our trek towards another spot that has been on our list, Velika Tarnova. This was going to be another long journey, but we were very amped. This took us back into the country and away from the sea. The recent memories of such cool places fueled my energy to see more. And this was an old fortress from medieval times located up on a mountain. I was ready. We were headed to Veliko Tarnova. Cruising through more towns and villages, we were well on our way. As we cruised through winding mountains and cool roads, we finally landed in Veliko Tarnova. We immediately got lodging and headed out for a walk, finding the center and a cool monument to remind me that I am in Bulgaria. As we cruised the narrow and steep streets of the old capital city of the country, the buzz of some private citizens have rented the fortress and paid for the light show. As this happens only a few times a year, we got super excited. One of the main reasons we came to Volika Tarnova was to see this fortress that dates back to medieval times so once we heard of the light show, we knew we would want to see it both day and night. So we got a cab down to the fortress about an hour prior to dark, found a quaint restaurant on the center corner with an insane view of the fortress and settled in for dinner and the light show. Dinner was awesome and the light show incredible with an array of lights that varied in color and went on for nearly 20 minutes. We watched the entire show and then cruised back for a rest to then go see the fortress in daylight. The morning came quick, and we were once again back at the same location to see such a wonderful place.
Once again, our travel luck, and it probably just being a weekend, we stumbled upon a parade that the fortress prepared for with some old style arrangements. They had guards dressed up in battle gear, and there was a parade starting to brew in celebration of the city. to leave the city before we were unable to get out. As we got back on the freeway heading home to Bellany, we learned of a waterfall that was on the way and decided it would be a nice cap to such an incredible journey. And as always, our travels have stumbled us upon findings as well. And in the middle of nowhere, we found another one. This place being in the middle of nowhere made the most sense. It was where Vasilevsky hid in the mountains called, pardon my Bulgarian, Karinskoda, Hanachi in Kurio, a very, very small village with a big history. After checking that place, we headed to our destination of Koshino, the waterfalls. Super tired and ready for Bellany, we arrived at the waterfalls in Koshino. We passed a few cool monuments that were a must, but the waterfalls were first. We got to the falls and then began the hike up the mountains. The walk was great with some picturesque spots and some sketchy bridges and paths. It took over 20 minutes, but we made it to the top for a wonderful sight of waterfalls, trees, and a view that was like no other. Taking a few pics was a necessity and a couple minutes to take it all in before the descent down and back to the car. It was a great stop and actually a pretty big fall with various ponds and mellow and steep falls. started our final drive back to Bellany. But before that, I got in two more radical monuments in two small villages. It's amazing how the smallest town will have the largest monument, something I wish we had more of here in the USA. I shot a couple quick clips and tried to learn a little of the history. Just like in America, some of the country's greatest people and events spawned from the tiniest areas. And that was it. We jumped in the car and made it back to Bellany, tired and in the need of rest, because the next day we would be off to Sofia after a cruise through the hometown. The journey ended with a day in Bellany with family and a walk through the town, marveling on its small wonders of shops, gardens, cafes, and the town's people. As we have spoke about each town, small or large, it has its own unique center in Bogusky Centrum with signs and most of the time its own statue or monument that represents some sort of standout for that region. In Bellany, it has a special fountain surrounded by cafes and shops. As the rain continued though and became worse, it prohibited my walk to the town's entrance which there lies a concrete monument. I 
walked home to my street finding a few more oddities along the way and grabbed a two Borg as well. We packed our bags and began the saddening goodbyes as we jumped in my brother-in-law and good friend's car for the four hour journey toward the country's capital city, Sofia, to prepare for the onward journey. The ride is beautiful passing through many cool places, some quicker than others with interesting views. This ride consisted of a rainy day with gray overcast and foggy mountains. We made it through the four tunnels and arrived upon Sofia at dusk. We arrive in Bulgaria's capital city of Sofia in the early evening. We cruise through the streets and see some neat stuff in such a large city. As we got hungry, we stopped at a nearby Chinese restaurant for some food to end the evening and grab some local beers as well for a nightcap and to prepare for the 20 some hour journey that lies ahead of us. It was such a wonderful trip to a, such a beautiful and old country. So much to see, so many things to do in such a small time. If you ever get the opportunity to visit Bulgaria, please do so. Thank you.